Well, welcome to Table Talk. Today, I'm here with Iris Kerrigan. Iris is an accomplished artist and an author of three books, and we're sitting here in her beautiful studio. Iris, thank you for letting us um, come in and set up shop here, um, so to speak, and have a cup of coffee and talk about the experience you've had uh, teaching art lessons at Gabriel's house. Well, thank you, Yvonne. It's such an honor and a blessing to be here. I, I just so appreciate all that Gabriel House does and, and all the work that you're doing there. So it's an honor and a blessing for me. Thank mm. you. Thank you, because this is the perfect opportunity for us to talk about art and Gabriel's House. Mm -hmm. And it was one of our residents, Laura, who um, is now living on her own. She has an amazing job. She's um, got a great ministry. And she's the one, when she was a resident, who was telling me, wow, I'd really love to pick up art again. I'd love to yeah. express myself in art again. And I said, wow, wouldn't it be cool if we could do some art classes at Gabriel's house? And you came to mind because as I know, you teach art lessons right here in this studio, right? And you've been teaching art for how long? Have you been oh, an art gosh, teacher? Oh gosh, a long time, um, probably 35 years, or something like that off and on, you know? <laughs> wow, so lots of experience. Well, I guess so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and it's been a real joy to do that. Uh, there's been uh, short stints where I taught at an art school and things like that, but I always love to come back here. One of the first th things I've noticed with teaching beginners in art, whatever their situation is, right. is they have this assumption that you're supposed to be an excellent artist from the beginning, otherwise you're probably not an artist. Right. And I had to keep telling them, no, 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 it took me many years of studying and practicing mm. and practicing and studying before I could you know, do this sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And don't expect yourself to do a perfect painting the first time. Right. And then I finally one day I brought my very first painting, which was done when I was nine years old, oh. in oil, and I said, you see? This wasn't a very good painting, but that was my first painting. And mm -hmm. so I've come a ways from that because there's a certain amount that you're born with artistically, but sure. a lot of it's just skills that you need yeah, to learn. Practice, right? So I think that made them relax a little bit, you know, mm -hmm. and say, oh, I don't have to do a perfect painting first time. No, you're not going to do the first yeah. one. I love that. And I love the fact that at Gabriel's house, we look at ways to really encourage the whole person, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, yes, we have the, the essential things, you know, the case management, sure. the support groups. Um, we have, um, you know, life skills trainings, right. employment coaching, you know, helping these women, because we're a working program at Gabriel's house to help women get jobs and start working. But I love that we've brought in something that really just ministered to their souls in a yeah. way. You know, art is such a soul, soulful yeah. thing, isn't it? You know, it is. It puts you in a different world mentally and spiritually because you're using a different part of your brain for one thing. Yeah. And so yeah. you you really can't be thinking about that other stuff too much because right. it won't work for the art if you sure. are. <laughs> yeah. So it feels like you know it just flies by yeah. because that part of your brain does not measure time. <laughs> Isn't that a wonderful thing yeah, about it? I yeah, mean, I, do, I yeah. totally see what you're saying. You yeah. just have to be focused. You kind of escape. Right. And they need, we don't we all need some time and space yeah. to escape the things that, you know, in, in a positive way. They yeah. just put those things aside for a while and just do something that's really creative and enjoyable. Well, then we said, okay, so how can we make this happen at Gabriel's house, teaching some art classes on Saturdays? Mm -hmm. And um, when I first brought it up to you, you and I were kind of brainstorming, but you really pulled this all together. Well, in a way, God pulled it together. I think God did. Right? Right? Yeah. I, I would say that for sure. Yes, right. Um, but tell us a little bit about that. How, because yeah. you needed supplies, paints, easels, oh, yeah. all these things to teach an art class. It's not an inexpensive thing no, to, to no. teach art. And, before you called me to ask if I'd be interested in teaching the art class, I had had this experience where I was watching a movie one day. I don't even remember what the movie was, but there was this one little phrase that jumped out at me and it's like almost the way scripture does to us sometimes, you know, mm -hmm. and, and I couldn't stop thinking about the phrase. And I thought, why am I still thinking about the phrase? And the phrase was, you can't erase crayon. 
Well, as an artist, I knew that crayon is a waxy kind of medium and mm -hmm. that once you put it on a piece of paper mm -hmm. or a canvas yeah. or anything, it is really hard to cover it. You can't really erase it or wipe it off too well either. And no matter what you try to do to hide it, it's still there. It kind yeah. of comes through. And I, so I knew it was a profound metaphor. I just knew that it was a profound metaphor for all the things that are colored into our hearts mm -hmm. from the time we're little children. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they're good, bright, and colorful things, but sometimes they're not so good. Yeah, but they stay true. with us through our life. Mm -hmm. And so I knew this, but I didn't know why I was thinking about this phrase so yeah. long. And then I get the call from you. Would you come and teach an art mm -hmm. class at Gabriel's house? Well, I had also, for several months before, been praying that God would lead me to use my artistic skills in a ministry that's of faith mm -hmm. as well, and you know, combine that. Yes. So when I got the call, I immediately knew why I had gotten that phrase and God had laid it on my heart. Yeah. Because here's a place where we have these wonderful women coming and they've got lots of bad things colored in their hearts and lives over the years yeah. that are hard to erase, hard things to deal with still. Mm -hmm. And so it was an artistic metaphor for how I could maybe help them you know, paint new colors into their life. Mm. And so that yeah. happened. And then I began to gather supplies, as you said, you know, I, you gotta have a lot of stuff. And I knew these women couldn't afford to get their own. Normally in my own art class, they bring their own art sure. supplies. And I might provide the easels because it's my studio and a couple of other things, but all the major stuff they do. So I'm thinking, well, it's gonna be done there. I gotta have paints and brushes. And I wanted to do oil paint, which is, got a lot of stuff involved you yes. have to have. So I gathered what I had on hand, but I needed a little bit more. So some friends donated some oil paints and brushes, which was really mm -hmm. wonderful. Yeah. And, and then the biggest expense was easels. And I thought, well, I can bring a couple of my easels over there that are portable, but I can't bring four or five. That's gonna right. be cumbersome, especially back and forth every other week. Yeah. What am I going to do about easels? That's an expensive item, you know, and the stores are not going to donate that. So I prayed about it and um, God laid it on my heart to speak to um, a frame owner, a frame shop owner in Agora. And I had to go there anyway for something in my own business. And so I asked her, did she know an artist that maybe had some easels they didn't use? She said, no, I don't know anybody. I really don't. And then she said, wait a minute. I might have some. <laughs> and sure enough, she oh. had 17 table easels, which is, which is what I wanted. Table, And yes. I didn't have a lot of table easels. Right. I had the stand-up kind. 17 table easels that somebody had given her, I don't know, 10 years ago. Wow. They were stored in a, a hangar in a Camarillo and brand mm -hmm. new, never used. Yep. She just gave them all to me. And she said, this is so odd that mm -hmm. you would even think yeah. to ask me. Right. Because... I'm not an artist right. and everything. And she said it had to be a God thing. I said, you got it. And so there was another way mm. of ministering to somebody else. Yes. And now recently, and this is going to be a surprise for the women of mm. the art class I just finished teaching, what? they're going to get free frames for their paintings. Because wow, this she, woman's yeah, I had talked to her again about some things, that business that I was doing with her, you know. And mm. She said, oh, by the way, do your ladies need some frames over there at Gabriel's house? I said, well, that'd be great, you know. So wow. she kind of custom put together these frames to fit the size of the canvases. Here you go. Wow. And, and we may have a new donor, too, because it was in her shop. And he happened to come in. He's an artist, and he wants to donate to Gabriel's house on the spur of the moment. Wow. He said, that sounds like a wonderful ministry. How can I contribute? You've really become sort of an ambassador for Gabriel's house. And that's what we all are as we you oh. know, move about our day-to-day -day lives, sharing um, the mission of Gabriel's house. And it's contagious. People get excited about it, you know. Mm -hmm. But not only have you reconnected with us as a volunteer doing the art classes, but you've also recently become a board member. So yeah. thank you for yeah. saying yes to that. Oh, because yeah. that it's and it's easy to say yes to, right? Because oh, yeah. there's so much good happening at Gabriel's house. But let's let's get back to these art classes because that I know is your heart. You were connecting one on one with these women. Tell me a little bit about what that was like. Yeah, to... well, it was a learning experience for me too. We had a couple of stops and starts in the, in the first art class and stuff, and a lot of it was just understanding, you know, where they are and how I can help them to get settled in and their insecurities. You know, mm -hmm. one of them was 
just coming for well, I really can't do this kind of thing, you know, questioning whether they could do it and and uh, I'm not good enough and those kinds of yes. things, you know. And so it was hard to get a real stable start at first. They finally settled in and, and started having fun and, and doing great, you know. So that was that was really neat. Tell me a little bit about how these ladies went through the process of painting. Mm. One of the things I do with all my students um, here or there is teaching them how to look at their reference because I print out a photograph for them to look at. I say, you need to keep looking back at your reference and focusing on that because it's not just the same tree every time or the mm -hmm. same mountain or the same grass or anything. And so you want to learn how to paint that tree that rock and mm -hmm. so forth. And the yeah. only way you're going to do that is if you really look at it and you have to keep looking at it. Mm -hmm. And so that's, yeah. and I said, what you're doing when you do that, you're also training the creative side of your brain because that part of your brain is more adept at doing that. If you're using mm -hmm. the, the left side of your brain, which they believe is more the analytical uh, side of your brain, it can't do that. Mm -hmm. It doesn't know how. Mm -hmm. So when you learn to really paint what you're looking at, what you're seeing, and really see things, mm. you'll do a better job of it. So this is what mm, I try to stress yeah. throughout the whole process. And of course, how that applies to life. That you know, We want our eyes to be focused on the Lord. We want to focus on what He's telling us and see what's really there because we make assumptions about things sometimes that maybe not be true. And so mm -hmm. yeah. that's the same thing with art. When we're, we're painting a tree, for instance, we think, oh, a tree is always this way. No, we want to paint that tree, not just a tree. And that's going to get you more skilled in painting and art, but it's also about life, you know. Mm -hmm. Let's really look at what's really going on there. So I like that, that you're really teaching them to focus. Yes. Mm -hmm.